What is up? I'm Jared Welch. He's Aaron Halterman. It is Thursday, December 1st. Hey, happy December. And this is Flickers Off. What's up, man? Dude, I'm so excited to December. It's unbelievable. I hate November after the Breeders' Cup. I despise it because just nothing happens in racing. But now it's December and we've got the Cigar Mile and then Oakland starts next week. And then the Rivington to Park Springboard Mile, our draft. December's the best month after the a boring November after the Breeders' Cup. Isn't it your birthday in November? Yeah, but I still hate it. <laughs> <laughs> well, my birthday is in December, so I love December. No, yeah. No, I mean, here's the thing. This time of the year, December, is great. It, it, you're right from that perspective, but you all, like you said, you kind of pivot into the two-year-olds about to be three, and you kind of get a feel for those. But then you also have, you know, just – you have Christmas and you have football, kind of the the, the playoffs, whether it be college is there. Uh, NFL is really starting to get closer. So, yeah, it's from, from a, like a general sports perspective. I agree. This is this is the magical time of the year, Alterman. Yes, it is. And like I said, it's no longer boring. I can watch racing on the weekends and it's like, gosh, I just wish we'd run a graded stakes for once. We finally got it back. And so the Derby Trail also going full swing, too. And that's, that is always the most fun time of the year as well. I mean, the lead up is almost as fun as the Derby itself. So it's, it's great. Yeah. And yeah, there you go. Uh, shoddy. Um, thank you for joining. And yet tournament last tournament this weekend, we'll talk a little bit about that coming up, but yeah, the last, uh, dudes challenge tournament qualifier this weekend on cigar mile day at aqueduct, the whole card there last chance to qualify. I believe we have 30, five people now in the championship which is going to be held on december 26th on on uh, malibu day it's a free entry you get you have to qualify but it's free to, to play in that championship and if you do you win you know if you're a subscriber like shoddy is 750 dollars cash money and she's already won some money uh leading up to this thing so yeah she can qualify again i think she already has one um if you haven't qualified like uh the two people on this show um actually every racing dude and dude employee i don't believe besides Mar dr miranda has but i think that's it we got to qualify and uh if it doesn't happen i will hold one person tournaments mm -hmm. leading up <laughs> until i can get in so uh but anyways yeah so that this weekend make sure you go to uh, racingdudes.com you can see it there's an article there uh if you are a premium subscriber just go to your dashboard and uh and you can access uh, that tournament right there. The link is in the dashboard. Halterman, our good friend, friend of the show, friend of the dudes, Mr. John White. He posted uh, his latest, his, his inaugural uh, top 10 for the Kentucky Derby 2023 Kentucky Derby. Obviously, very early on. Um, being that it is, let's say December 1st, this is, this is posted right before, uh, this, this week, uh, in November, end of November posts his top 10 and dude, not only does he post his top 10, but this dude throws some stones on the table and predicts a triple crown winner this year, you know, leading up to the, you know, this two-year-old into three-year-old, uh, year predicts a triple crown now the story goes if you if you know john you've seen him on the show he did predict secretariat would win the triple crown but he also did that like in march of that same year so i mean this to do this all the way even as a two-year-old i'll go give it to you you tell the people who it is and uh what were your thoughts of this this is like love this guy but man that was that was bold I'm not sure that's accurate. I think he said Secretary would win when he was a two-year-old, actually, uh, that he would win the Triple Crown. But uh, similarly enough, Extra Anejo is the horse that he ranked number one in his way-too-early Kentucky Derby top 10. Um, that was not a su surprise. John plays in a fantasy league and had the number one overall pick, drafting three-year-olds, four-year-olds, males, females. They do everything in their draft. And he picked Extra Anejo with the number one overall pick. So I was not surprised to see that he had extra Anejo on top uh, as far as the number one horse for the Kentucky Derby. What you do not expect to read on November 30th from your friend John White is not only does he like extra Anejo enough to put him number one, he thinks he's going to win the Triple Crown. 
in typical John White fashion, there were seven points that he made in this article that I thought were really good. You can read the article at expressbet.com, but I will kind of just summarize some of these seven as he's made a very, very bold prediction uh, that Extra Anejo is going to win this thing. And number one, we can go back and forth on this. He basically let, he was like, look, look at this maiden special weight win, the one race Extra Anejo has. It was brilliant. He earned a 92 speed figure for it. That's great, uh, buyer speed figure. But the horse just was in a gallop the whole time, as John says. And he, he noted that Marcus Hirsch noted the horse totally galloped out away from everybody uh, through the finish line. So I guess we could start with that. Were you as impressed as John was with the with the debut effort? Yeah, well, you know, it started off. Uh, by the way, I, was, I brought up the article. It it did say, it say he, he said on in March on March twenty second, nineteen seventy nineteen seventy three. <laughs> I wrote the following in my high school newspaper. So it was March of that. He said, "Going out on a limb and living dangerously, I dare to say the nineteen seventy three will be a historic year. As Secretary, it will become the first World Crown winner since the Great Citation in nineteen forty eight. So he did that. He did do that that year. Okay, the year of. But to your point. That's still early, um, yeah. but to your point, to do it now is just you're because you're basically going off of that race that you're talking about, that debut. That's all you have to go off of. Uh, I mean, when once I start, like obviously I remember the debut, but once I started hearing his name thrown around there, and you know I, we follow his draft that he does with some of the guys at DRF, and um, once I saw that John had taken him uh, first round, uh, first pick, first round. I started kind of diving in a little bit more like, okay, what is this? You know, what, what I need to watch this horse closely and kind of figure out what he's seen. And then of course, uh, seeing this, it's like, Oh damn. Like, listen, I, I'm admi I admittedly not awesome at may basically predicting what a two year old is going to do as a three year old. And I don't know many people are, um, it's just, it's so hard to tell. I, I can say that what I saw from him as that in that race was, very impressive and that speed figure was legit he beat the hell out of that field and he never really got out of like he, got, he never got out of first gear um and, and the way steve talks about the horse and there's you know you gotta remember Aspison. i mean obviously not not only has he not won a triple crown he's never won the derby so he's gonna have to do that first yeah, absolutely and he's lost the derby with some horses that quite frankly and steve asked me so i'll tell you this this is not a knock I, i've heard him say it he shouldn't have lost uh that that race with some of the horses he's had like a curlin like a gun runner like an epicenter last season like epicenter. so that's going to be step number one uh the second thing john talked about he believes speaking of epicenter that extra anejo is way better or much better in his words than epicenter um and he kind of just points out look Epicenter got a 64 buyer for his career uh, debut and, and extra Nejo got a 92 and he, he points out ways that he's a little bit more advanced. Number three on the list kind of sp spoke to me directly. He said he's never heard Asbuston speak so glowingly about one of his two-year-old Colts. This is, I can definitely confirm to be true. He is over the moon about this one. And as a guy that's seen pretty much every Steve Asbuston interview since 2007, I can tell you there are times where Asmussen really will speak uh, highly of one and kind of gets you going and kind of gets you thinking, okay, this is one he really likes. He never really gushes about one this early, and he definitely is all over this horse. Um, so I, I'm very interested uh, in, in that aspect of it as well and to hear more interviews with Asmussen. Uh, number four on the list, another Asmussen thing, and this is another one I can, I can confirm is true. He basically says a, a horse that works out really fast for Asmussen is rare. He is not one to ask his horses to work fast. Actually, it's quite the opposite. He, he wants a more slower, controlled work. And John points out, Epicenter had, uh, had let's see, he said only one of Epicenter's first 24 published workouts was a bullet. Okay? One out of 24 uh, was a bullet. Uh this is crazy when you look at Extra Anejo. Four out of his last seven workouts have been bullet workouts. Hmm. So that shows you the raw talent, and that's kind of what John pointed out. You know Asmussen, too. That's that's pretty incredible. 
Well, yeah, and it's like that's kind of what what's so funny about it is, is is the way he works out, the way that he ran on the track would remind you of like a Baffert two year old. We're not we're, we're very used to seeing that kind of horse from a ba- from Baffert as a two year old. You know those freaky kind of performances early on. You don't often see it from Steve Aspison this early on. These kind of figures, the way, like you're saying, the way the horse is working out. Not to mention the horse is a one what one point three five million dollar purchase. So it's like the ex- ex- expectations were there right off the bat, you know, like um, from the purchase. So, um, yeah, man, like it's, uh, it's a, and Hey, you know, December 26, Malibu day. Sounds like we might be seeing uh, extra Neho in the gun runner that same day on December 26 seems to be the plan. So we'll, you know, we'll find obviously him winning or losing that race means nothing for the triple crown long ways to go. But, uh, obviously all eyes are going to be on him as, as each and every race, because that's, a, that's the other thing too, that has like, we, what do we always say about Aspuson? We always say like, he, he's, he can get a horse to the Derby. Like he has no problem getting, like he can, can't, if it's a decent enough horse, no problem getting the horse there healthy and he'll dominate. I mean, hell he'll, he'll dominate the fairgrounds races with much less talent than these, than this horse. Right um yeah so exactly you, you and got to think you'll get him there go ahead yeah and, and to stay on the Aspuson subject he said he's got much good number five his fifth point of seven here he's got a ton of confidence in Aspuson to be able to get a horse back in 14 days to win a race he talks about Curlin how he ran in the Kentucky Derby 14 late, days later won the Preakness he mentions Rachel Alexandra winning the Kentucky Oaks and then winning the Preakness as well so uh, to your point of what you just said he has a supreme confidence in Steve Asmussen's training ability. Two other things. He believes, uh, number six, that the horse will possess the stamina to get the mile and a half. Looking at the pedigree, horses like Affirmed is, are in the family tree. Alidar in the family tree as well. Uh, he mentioned some other horses with solid pedigrees uh, that are with solid uh, distance uh, performances in that uh, pedigree line for Extra Anejo. And then number seven, and, and it speaks to what you said, we're probably going to see him in the gun runner stakes. So he's going to have two starts. And John acknowledges that the times have changed, you know, in the past with only two starts going in to the three-year-old season, that might be a negative, but he, he fully acknowledges that's really not the case anymore. It's kind of the normal thing. So yeah, made in special weight. And like you said, the gun runner stakes on December 26th at fairgrounds should be next for extra Anejo. I, okay. That, that's his case, right? I want to know if you agree with what John has wrote there on November 30th that he's predicting a triple crown winner. I mean, the best thing, like, sure. Like, you know, and to, to, even when I asked him about it, his kind of the way he responded was, I, I think he's going to win the Kentucky Derby. And if he does, what's stopping him from w- winning the next two legs? Well, a lot, I, obviously. Um, but I do get the logic. Uh, do I think the horse is going to win the triple crown? No. I don't. I mean, it's just and not because I don't think it's I think it's a bad take. I think it's a I think it's it's a take that's got some major stones, but it, it's it's November, well, it's December 1st and the horse has made one start and the the trainer's never won the Kentucky Derby and I get it Steve Aspison and if there's any guy that's to do it's that guy, but that, it's just you're it's just like you we don't like to play the future wagers because shit what could you know lots could change and the horse may not even be healthy at the that time you know there's just too much there's too many also uh things to consider this early in the game to for me to say yeah i think he's gonna win the triple crown i just don't have i guess i don't have john white stones i i think uh let's let's forget about the injury aspect of it because that's always you know that could happen to anybody at any that. time that could happen one day before the derby so i'm not gonna address that i think everybody knows that that's there uh, what John has basically done, this horse finished uh, as far as an individual betting horse. He was not even the favorite in the first Kentucky Derby future pool. He went off at 13 to 1. Forte was the favorite at 10 to 1. John's also predicted that this horse, who we've seen once, you know, it, it, it's and only seen at seven furlongs, is going to win the Triple Crown. Yeah, it takes stones and it, he's. Put it on the line. I mean, he definitely has opened himself up for some criticism as well. Uh, if this horse doesn't uh, doesn't you know turn out to be decent, I I think 
I don't think he's going to be happy that <laughs> with the result. I don't think this horse is going to win the Triple Crown either. It's hard for me to agree with the comment when I don't even have him ranked number one in the class right now. I, I, I have Forte ranked ahead of him. And I think to John's seventh point, I think what makes this really tough is we don't get to see a lot of these horses before they turn three. It, it's more and more so we only get to see them one or two times. And we haven't ever seen this horse going two turns, and that's my biggest thing. I, and listen, I'm not suggesting the horse should have debuted at a mile and 16th. That just doesn't happen very often anyway. That, that was the logical thing, to go with a seven for a long route. But going to that two-turn race for the first time, you know, sometimes they just don't handle it. And there's no indication that extra Anejo is not going to. But, you know, I would I need to see him go two turns before I can start thinking about him as far as a uh, talent that can win the Kentucky Derby. But you got to give him credit. And the thing that I really liked about it, he didn't just make the prediction and then go on and start writing about the Kentucky Derby Future Pool. He <laughs> made seven points that all are spot on and make sense, right? So could he be right? I, I, I mean, it's anything's possible, but the article's a must read because the points are pretty much spot on. I don't necessarily think it's going to happen, but I think it's exciting that John is so high on the horse. Well, and regardless, I mean, uh, it's a, it's it's going to create a lot of buzz with this horse that uh, obviously there was a lot of buzz there, but now the – uh, the, the people are going to be watching this horse even more so. And, and it is kind of nice to see that it's not a, another Bob Baffert horse uh, that can't, you know, can't earn points. And what does that mean? You know, all this shit behind that. It's like, no, this is, you know, this is a Steve Asfusen, a, a, a solid trainer that's never won the Derby. We would, I think there don't think there'd be a person um, in the world that would be upset with him winning the, a Kentucky Derby. And that's just it. Like for anything, he could, the only thing that it, it for his prediction, like if he went, if he doesn't win the triple crown, it's like, okay. I mean, that was a good take or bold take, but whatever, but he's got to win the Derby. Right. I mean, to me, yeah. or I guess if he, if he got second, the Derby and then went and won the breeder or the, the Belmont and, and the Preakness or whatever, like this source has to win at least one of these legs in order for it not to be like a total, just that was great. Like that was just, I mean, if he, if he horse at least wins one leg, you say, well, triple crown's tough. Obviously, John, I mean, to even predict the horse would be good in May and June of the next year is, is, a, is a take on its own. Correct. That's that's the thing. I, the horse doesn't have to win the Triple Crown, you know, for us. To, if he wins two out of three legs, we're not going to go, that stupid John White. You know what I mean? Like, if he wins a Triple Crown race, it's, it's going to be a success uh, as far as, you know, kind of predicting, hey, he's going to be really good. Um, and yeah, when you say, when you come out, if you would have come out and said, listen, I think this horse is going to be a fantastic horse. It's got huge potential. That's one thing, but to say you're going to win the triple crown, it does add that extra bit of that takes balls. Number one to say, and that opens you up for criticism a bit. Uh, if something, you know, if it doesn't work out, uh, my last point on this, I think it's a tough year to win a triple crown based on what I've seen so far. I think this is going to be a very, very good crop. Uh, Samich and I were talking about this earlier. Last year at this time, I had a hard time coming up with five horses to put in my Kentucky Derby top five videos. This year, I'm having a hard time deciding who to put in them. I think there's a lot of prospects. John yeah. White mentioned a few. Arabian Knight, a very nice debut winner for Bob Baffert at Keeneland at that distance uh, that Extra Anejo uh, started at. Forte looks very good. He's a three-time grade one winner going into that three-year-old season. You know, he mentions uh, Arabian Lion, who was a, a solid second in an allowance at Keeneland. He mentions Cave Rock, a horse that everybody seems to have forgotten about. That horse was unbeatable, as I use my quotation marks for those <laughs> listening on the podcast, Virgin, uh, coming into the Breeders' Cup. And then uh, there's we've got some commenters, Loggins for Brad Cox was damn good when he faced Forte in that Breeders' Futurity, almost beat him. When that horse grows up a little bit, he's going to be good too. And that's just mentioned in six. There's others that are waiting in the wings, I think, that are really good. I think we got a good crop coming. So if Extra Anejo is going to win this thing, he better be special. Yeah, I went through and uh, and uh, it did start, worked, started working on my top 20 today or you know, or just started got to started working on a list and got to 20 very easily. 
like without somebody like five minutes to get to 20, yep. you know? Um, so it, it definitely feels like I'm with you that it feels like it's going to be that kind of year. And, you know, of course, the I guarantee you I get like the eighth or ninth pick again. Was last year I get a good solid pick and I don't, there was nothing, you know, I, you couldn't even, like you said, hard time. I had to take a manual at like three because it was just like, what are you supposed to do? So, yeah, of course, I, this year is the one. Um, when are we drafting, by the way, or drawing for the draft? So, yeah, I'm go- I was going to announce at the end of the show the 10 teams for this year's uh, league. We've got a couple of little changes, and this person right here is in the league. Her and Davey Cleveland will be a team. That's shoddy. So I, I was going to mention I'll mention it now. Uh, we're going to draw for draft position on next week's show, and then December 15th we're going to do the draft. So right. that's the that's the Thursday. So the 10 teams have changed a bit. I'll say it right now. All right. I've I've done something. This could be bad, Jaron. Uh, um, Magic Mike Show, obviously a team. John and Ryan, a team. Vinny from Real Dynasty. Geist uh, is obviously he's back. You are back. I'm back. Paul is back. Dan and Michael's back. And Shoddy and Davey. Okay. There's one team left, right? So Evil Stevel mm-hmm. lost his partner. So I have paired Evil Stevel and Kelby <laughs> on a team. Kelby Von Hemel, Evil Stevel will be the 10th oh, team. That is that, the wild card of the whole bunch. That has that is bad news written all over it. All over <laughs> they'll, have, they'll have fun, though. Yes. But I don't. They're, I, they're, uh, they're 50 to 1. Listen, Evil uh, Stevel is over the moon excited to be pairing with Kelby. I think Kelby's the same. They're very excited. So that's the 10 teams. Like I said, I will draw the names next week for the draft order. I, I, is it going to get to the – I mean, shit, like every team in the league is is paired up, I feel like. Is it going to get to the point where you and I are a pair and we're going to have enough – so many teams that we're going to have to do two furs on every team? The problem is so many people want to play. And I hate saying no because that's what this league's about. We like to give people like Shoddy and Davey, we like to get them in the league. You know, Evil Stevel was once a Shoddy or a Davey that was just watching. Same with Dan, same with Michael. That's what the same with Geist. So that's what the league is about, giving people chances. So yeah, you got to team some people up. Um, and it's just, you know. There's nothing I can do about it. I can't get, I can't make 20 teams because then you don't have enough horses. So I team people up and, uh, you know, listen, you and I, we shouldn't need a team member because we, we should be better than the rest of these, right? Well, I mean, we are mostly. So <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> uh, a lot of them are filler is the way I look at it. So I'm just, exactly. oh! just call it like I see it. Uh, no, I mean. I believe you and I have won this thing four or five times combined. So, uh, yeah, I mean, just I'm not worried about any of these guys. I, I, I'm not I, like the Kelby evil, like whatever. Uh, Magic Mike, you know, they finally got the job. I'm not worried about them moving forward. Um, they'll, they'll screw it up. Moving, You know, they, they got Epicenter, you know, hand in their lap. So I'm not worried well, about it. I'll say this. When when Cyberknife won the Arkansas Derby last year and Evil Stevel came running out of Oakland, the, the inside part of Oakland, and, and <laughs> yeah. yelling and scared yeah. Kelly Kelly Von Hemel to death <laughs> to make a shot, and he tackled us hugging. I was like, okay, that's, that's why we allow people like that to yeah. play because they love it. And so uh, I'm sure Shotty and Dave are going to be the same. I can't wait. It's always fun. Um, yeah. I, I listen, it's a great group of uh, people and um, yeah, it's going to be fun, man. I can't wait. He wasn't celebrating. I mean, he probably made some money as well, but he, he wasn't celebrating any of that did not mean anything to him. It was the fact that he got fantasy points in, in the league and that he wasn't going to get last or he had, you know, had a shot. And so, yeah, it's uh, that's what the league does to you. I mean, uh, yeah. it, you know, and it, like when Tava won Sandy at Derby this last year, I was like, it went from being towards the end of it to being like, Hey, I can win this thing. It just takes yep. one horse. Uh, it's, 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 and if you also think about it, if you're just, if you're just watching it or if you're, you're a fan, you're listening to the, the pod or you're watching these videos, just think you're getting, uh, well, how many, I don't know how many people you listed, but let's call it 15 to 20 people. Let's call it 
10 or so are, <laughs> you can count on um, of uh, that are putting out their top five horses. And, and I mean, so you're getting this, this compiled list of just the top 50 horses, um, a two-year-olds training three that you can try to follow uh, throughout the year. And it's just, it, it's a great way to kind of stay into some of these horses that, Especially like with John, you know, anytime John picks, you're like, you kind of hold your breath. Like, who's he got? Who's he like here? And, and you, you take that for what it's worth. And, and honestly, a lot of our, our guys that, um, that are in the league that have become so enamored with it, like when they make a pick, you're like, oh shit, like I got to keep an eye on that horse. Exactly. And listen, this year, I think if John White drafted first, he was definitely going to take extra Nejo, but. I don't think that's a horse that's number one on everybody's list, right? And so that's interesting as well uh, to get that aspect of like, okay, John got the first pick. Well, he's taking Forte. Obviously, it's like, whoa, he took extra Anejo. So even if you missed everything we just did, but you watched the draft night, that, that might give you a tune in. It's like, wow, he is really high on this horse, you know? So, yeah, absolutely. And John's always good for like that 30th pick. He's like, oh, here's a horse that's like, damn, I don't even know who that is, you know, and you got to look it up. You're like, okay, I see that now, you know, so, yep. All right, stay tuned. Um, lots, lots to come in the next couple weeks, but we have a show to do today. Today's show, we're going to preview and get picks for Saturday's $750,000 Cigar Mile at Aqueduct, Then we're going to get some rapid fire selections for the remaining major stakes races this weekend at Aqueduct and Del Mar, including the $250,000 Rimson at Kentucky Derby Prep Race and the $250,000 Demoiselle at Kentucky Oaks Prep Race, as well as a couple banger turf races out at Del Mar. Let's go! Oh, man. I don't know. Don't know if that... Uh, I love the pit. I mean, I love that he he went out on a limb and because it's not... It's, it's boring to be like, I think that horse is going to win the Kentucky Derby. I mean, it's like, whatever. But to say that horse is going to win the Triple Crown in November... I mean, come on. It's crazy. <laughs> it's, it's, it, it, like I said, it takes balls. But like I said, I, I, I like that the points were, you know, they made sense. Well, it makes our job easier for the draft because I think we ever, I mean, we all know where, where they're going. Yeah. Um, I mean, because we know that they're going to get the first or second pick, let's be honest. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So. Just gonna go ahead and put it out there. If I do get the first pick, I'm willing to I'm willing to talk and negotiate trades um, for that number one pick, John and Ryan, because I will take the horse just just out of spite. It's I'm you know it's it's gonna be interesting if the number one pick goes to somebody that's not them, which is very unlikely since they get it over here. <laughs> yeah, but if it if they don't get it, who? I mean, will extra Anejo get picked first? Will he get picked second if they don't? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, really interesting. Well, yeah, because if it's like you've got four, say you're the first pick, you've got Forte one, and say I'm second pick, and I, you know, still really like Cave Rock or whatever. Like, it, then all of a sudden the third pick, someone likes the other, uh, you know, Arabian horse or whatever. You know what I mean? So all of a sudden, does that horse get to fourth or fifth? You know, before you're like. <laughs> You know, so John and Ryan, you got to think it's not just if they get the one pick, but if you get a couple guys in front of you that um, that maybe don't want them, you can still possibly get a horse like that. So, yeah, for sure. And and then you've you've got the wild cards in our league, and you know, <laughs> where everybody gets based is is going to be really intriguing. And I I think more than anything, it, John made it a lot of fun to think about this season with that article, you know, I mean, it's definitely like a, it's going to feel like a keg of dynamite sitting out there in that first round of our draft in a couple of weeks. So. Oh yeah. I mean, cause that, that horse is going to have, uh, and let's just hope that he, you know, let's just hope that he's good, good enough this year to next year as the, you know, is like to at least keep this, going right that yeah. the, the triple crown is possible still um that he doesn't turn out like a <laughs> like a gun it or something that look had the had the hopes of being a really good horse and then just sucked um i don't obviously that's a terrible I, he's not that horse but no. point is let's hope he continues to run well um so you do have that hype going into it the the build up of i mean gosh i mean just 
if you, even if you do it between your friends and say, Hey, I think that horse is going to triple crown, but to make, you know, in our business, if you go out on a limb and, and make that point publicly, I hope the horse at least gives them a run. Let's just put it that Let's way. Say, step one, get in the gate. <laughs> <laughs> step two, win. Yeah. All right. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, it's, that's it's, easy. It's, it's two steps. Both, step, both steps aren't easy. Getting in that gate <laughs> is not easy. So <laughs> no. Step two, don't stumble out of the gate. And then yeah. I, <laughs> don't do don't do a thunder snow. Well, yeah, I was gonna say if John's sitting there right with us, he said step three, don't buck like a Bronco out of the gates. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You know that what's gonna happen is uh well no, I won't even say it. There's no there's not gonna be another rich strike, so <laughs> yeah, step four. Asmussen wins the derby. He has been cursed. So <laughs> gosh. Oh man. Speaking of that horse, yeah, he ran well last week, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, he was great. <laughs> so dumb. Uh, yeah, I hate so... that horse again. <laughs> I'd gotten to where I respected him a little, you know. I was like, ah, he's all right. He's growing on me. No, I hate him again. (laughs) Then he turned around and said, fuck you. And then (laughs) I'm back to hate it. I'll never like a horse less than I like that horse. (laughs) Oh, man. Uh, We'll see. Pegasus probably. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, no shit. All right. Let's get to it. Uh, Let's see. Saturday, race nine, Aqueduct, the Cigar Mile Handicap, grade one, 750K, a handicap for three-year-olds, and up going one mile field of uh, seven. I think it's going to be scratched down to a field of six with Obezos um, coming out due to the Churchill Downs thing. So you're going to have a field of six. And Zandon, Zandon, I mean, you know it's a pretty bad field when Zandon is your even money favorite for the race. And White Abario is nine to two, and Mind Control is five to two. But Zandon, more than anything, Alterman, he's even money to win a Grade One race. You would think that he's had a bang up year, right? Well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> your, your voice kind of stuttered a little bit when you said that. Uh, it's an interesting look. year. I think he's the best horse in this race far and away. I think he's going to win. I, I I have choked down the even money. I have put Zandon on top. I, I just feel like he ran the race of uh, his best race of his career last time out with Rosario board in the Pennsylvania Derby. If you remember that race, you know, the speed bias was strong that day at parks and Zandon closed really well in that race and got second. Now, he got smoked by Taba, but Taba is one to nine, or as John White would say, one to nine in this race if he's <laughs> in it. Taba would dominate this race. So I like Zandon here. Um, I almost went wide of Barrio, but I I just, I don't know. I think the cutback's going to be good for that horse. I think he's one you got to use. End of the day, though, I think Zandon's a little bit better. So I put Zandon on top. Yeah, I mean, I know I kind of made a joke about it there, him being the favor, but shit, I just... I don't know how you really uh I don't know how you really go past. I, I listen, I mind control is the horse that I think gets it done if it's not him. He's he can show the ability to to win a race like this. It sounds like this is gonna be his last career race, um, which I don't necessarily love. Uh, but you know, he's not ran terrible really all year for the most part. Um <clears throat> he definitely likes aqueduct seven starts, four wins. I mean you got to think my control is trying to try to do this thing um, uh, close to, if not front, you know, wire to wire. But the, the issue is in is, and, and to be clear, I, <laughs> I picked him to win too, because every, every metric I look at, he's a standout. He's a met. I mean, it's just, it's, it's pretty clear, but the guy has not won since the bluegrass where he looked like, I mean, he looked like the real deal. He went off the, or he was, I'm sorry, he was the morning line favorite of the Kentucky Derby. It was that good of an effort. Third in the Derby, second in the Jim Dandy. And by the way, 
none i guess the derby what well, he did look like a winner for a second but the jim danny never really looked like a winner travers never was looked like a winner obviously and the pennsylvania derby never looked like a winner but he all he ran well in all of them and he ran good figures in all of them it just wasn't close but he's facing table he's facing epicenter um cyber knife i mean obviously all very good horses all horses that ran in the classic so uh at cyber knife of course ran the breeders cup um uh, dirt mile but still they all ran uh, breeders cup horses so you got to think that he like this is major class relief for him right like major I mean, the horses that he has beaten would be favored in here and the horses that defeated him would be favored in here so that's just it like you said he looked great in the bluegrass well, shit, this is about like the bluegrass, right? I mean, this is not a stellar group. I, I just think, yeah. you know, the other thing about it that I think might actually help him, and, and people will probably disagree with this, I think the cutback to a mile is actually going to help him. One of his wins was a one-turn race. So I, I think this mile will be okay for him, too. Yeah, I, I, I think just, also, you know, Rosario rode the horse on debut and then hadn't didn't ride him again until last time out in that Pennsylvania Derby. He's back aboard here, not Pratt. Pratt, obviously, out in California. I think having Rosario back, learn a little something about him. And I, I would I would venture to guess he'll be closer to the pace than we than he was last time, say, in the Pennsylvania Derby. There has to be, be because there's not a ton of pace in the race. No, there's not. You might be right about that. Yeah. I, I just think he's going to outclass him. You know, that's that's just the easiest way to put it. And we'll see. I don't <laughs> – don't bet the five. <laughs> don't don't bet the five. The five's out. Uh, oh, Bezos. Uh, I think the plan was to run here. Obviously, that's why they entered. But there's uh, the regulations now with – what is it? Like uh, the a virus or something with the horses out of Churchill Downs. So they're putting a restriction on it, right? Yep, equine herpes virus at Churchill Downs. No track is accepting them right now. Um, yeah, Churchill, they're they're struggling. Their their properties, you know, got got herpes at Churchill Downs. They can't grow grass there. They can't run grass races at fairgrounds. It's it's rough right now for Churchill. They don't have a paddock anymore either. So, well, they at least they're trying to improve something there. I don't I don't hold that against them. Now, will the paddock be ready by Kentucky Derby Day? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's another that's another issue. But anyways, uh, yeah, no five. Who is is mind control the horse for you over Wide Barrio? Um, if you're not playing Zan, if you don't want to suck down the even money, is it is it mind control? Um, I, no, I like Wide Barrio and I like get her number uh, over mind control. I don't. I haven't really liked mind controls races this year, um, and I don't like when it's okay. This is our last ride. You know, I don't like that. So. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't actually, like that either. My big opinion is stand it on top and let's try to get a couple of mid mid range, you know, for a six horse field at least mid range prices in second. Um, so you like? Yeah, the four had a nice race last time out. Gets to picks up Saez, Peter Miller, obviously. How about the one? I thought the one that ran a nice race last time out in that Kelso. Yeah, I put that horse as kind of like the wild card or the long shot that you can use here. Um, much tougher race, but it is nice. You got to win. You got over the track. It's a great two. You look at this field, you know, it's not great. So I think the horse can compete for sure. Zan, you know, Zan could use this race, a, a win here. You know, this was a horse that obviously is, is he just by running in a lot of the big races, winning, of course, the bluegrass uh, has, 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 has gotten over $1.4 million in earnings um pretty much this year uh horse of course did run second in the rims and we'll talk about the rims in here coming up this year's rims and ran second to mo donegal um in that race last year uh obviously had a great year but he could use a, this kind of win here to kind of kick him into uh next season because it's a horse that has obviously always had some sort of promise um for chad uh it obviously has been either facing really good horses much better horses than him or just has not quite had it figured out either. You know, is it, he, you look at that bluegrass, and I get that he didn't beat anybody, but that day I think we all were like, damn, that was a pretty nice effort. So, I mean, if he could, if that is something he could build on um, and really kind of show that he knows how to win again, he definitely could build a, a, a resume into going into a four-year-old. 
most of his horses that he had trouble with are gone. So it's kind of the doors open for him. Let's see if he steps through it. That's the key. And it starts on Saturday. You know, I'm just thinking like, you don't see a lot of, and I'm probably going to, there's probably like one very glaring horse that I'm not thinking about, but you don't see a lot of really good four, well, four and up uh, horses for uh, like Colts, not excluding turf horses for Chad Brown. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Like they don't, they, 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 these, a lot of it, those three year olds that he gets that you think really highly of really quickly and like, Oh, and then you don't, they kind of physically don't hear from him anymore. Yeah. They either they're, they retire or they don't do great as four year olds. You're right. Uh, you know, good magic retired. Jack Christopher retired. Right. Uh, highly motivated came back. I think he won a grade three this year as an older horse, but you're right. It's like, you don't think of highly motivated as a good older horse. So, um, Trying to stop top of my head, I'm with you. Now, turf horse is obviously, like you said, different, but yeah, you're right. Yeah, so we'll see what he does. Uh, this race, we'll see what he does. Uh, if, if he comes back as a four year old, but for now, this race, uh, <laughs> mark it down. Halter and I are both picking number two, Zandon, to win the grade one cigar. You can, that's uh, <laughs> that's pretty sad. <laughs> it's a world we live in yeah unfortunately um well sometimes the, the cigar mile comes back strong and sometimes it doesn't you know it's the latter this time it, it's definitely on this it's in, on that place on the schedule or it's like e, this might come back bad you know Uh, all right, let's do some uh, rapid fire. We got uh, five races to talk about. Two on the undercard here. We'll talk about the Oaks and Derby preps. We'll go to Del Mar uh, for uh, for some racing on Saturday, and then Del Mar again on Sunday. Time for rapid fire, presented by the Inside Track to the 2022 Cigar Mile. Get the all inclusive 11 page wagering guide to the 2022 Cigar Mile on December 3rd. Uh, at Aqueduct this Saturday, we just talked about the cigar mile. You get more in depth uh, preview and analysis picks, everything we're playing for that race. Within that, it's four stakes included in this thing. Of course, the the cigar mile. You've got the Demoiselle, the Rims, and the Gopher Wand. All four include there. Bonus race by race analysis, betting suggestions, multi race plays for Aqueduct's entire Saturday card. If you are a premium premium subscriber, you do get this for free. If not, go and purchase it at RacingDudes.com. It's available right now. Uh, talking about a couple of those races here, the Oaks and Derby on display, sort of, uh, this weekend. You got race six, the Demoiselle on the undercard here at Cigar Mile on Saturday at Aqueduct. Race six, the grade two Demoiselle stakes. Uh, it is a Kentucky Oaks win and you're in. Uh, not 10, 4, 3, 2, 1 for your top five finishers. Uh, Halterman, maybe this one's a little possibly more productive than the next one we'll talk about. Uh, you got a field here. That's mm, underwhelming to say the least. Seven horses, but you do have three to five on the three horse for Todd Fletcher, Siaz, Julius Shining. Does this seem like a logical horse for you? It seems like a slam dunk to me. I think Julius Shining is going to be really tough in here. I don't know what her ceiling is. I want to be clear on that to be just to start off. Uh, really good debut race. The speed figure didn't come back very strong, but impressively visually. Should love the stretch out and distance. This is uh, a full sister to Malifaux, a horse, obviously, that was great at the distance. Curlin by an AP Indy mare, obviously, you know, out of an Indy, AP Indy mare, I should say, obviously should be going long and, and go and do really, really big, uh, big things. She faces a field today. I, I don't know. It's, it's one of the worst I've seen for a Kentucky Oaks prep. If she doesn't win, you almost write her off. So I got the three Julia shining. I think she's going to dominate in this race. Yeah, I don't. It's pretty. This is a pretty sad race, in my opinion. And, uh, I, you know, Foggy Knight was the only horse that I was like, maybe. And then I, the more I looked at that horse, the more I looked at the three and just kind of the the breeding around the three and kind of the thoughts being a full, uh, a full sister to Malathot and 
Pletcher, Saez, you know, <clears throat> that last race, that main special weight at Keelan came back. The horse looked really good. The horse that got second came back to win. I think it was a pr pretty productive race there. I Like, I, I don't know. I mean, maybe if this horse just comes out and just kind of like cruises around, never really gets out of, you know, first gear or so, second gear, I'll be somewhat interested in the three and from the Oaks perspective, but if it's anywhere close, I just am going to have a hard time taking too much stock in here. Yep. I agree. It, it, honestly, uh, we can, I guess we, we can go ahead and go to the next race here <laughs> because I, I think you can say the same or even more so um, with race seven, the rims and stakes, grade two, 250 K two year olds going mile and eighth. And of course this is a Kentucky Derby prep race, 10, four, three, two, one for your top five finishers. You know, we talked about it um, when we did Cigar there that, you know, last year we got this awesome matchup between Mo Donegal and Zandon. And, of course, you know, we we kind of, you know, always, you always, you always kind of throw out the rims in uh, mile and eighth race for two-year-olds. Who cares? But then last year, these two horses kind of stuck around. Mo Donegal, of course, wins the Belmont. Zandon, you know, is around all year, running all the big races, running well, um, wins the bluegrass. So it's like, oh, that's a productive race. Is the ribs and going to go back to being a shitty race? It seems like we might have that. Yikes. <laughs> Dude. Dude. So one of my favorite things to do on along the Derby trail is, uh, you know, watch a lot of races, but you go back and watch the, all the replays. It's so fun to kind of look, okay, how's this horse progressing? How's this horse coming along? I hated every replay I watched of every one of these horses. Not one time did I go, oh, that's a, that's a nice horse. Uh, <laughs> I found problems with all of them. The replay out of all of them I liked the most was uh, the number two Tuskegee Airman, the debut race at Parks. I thought it was pretty good. Uh, it, he, he debuted on uh, Pennsylvania Derby Day. And uh, it was a decent maiden special weight field for Parks. Luis Saez jumped aboard that day and the horse ran okay i mean it, it was like okay that's a good first start we'll build on that i go to watch the second start and it's like holy shit he looked like he was gonna finish off the board in a stakes at delaware i don't know if he finally got going or the rest of them stopped but it's like oh god but jared i watched the other ones and i'm like yeah he probably is gonna be the best one of this bunch i, I think it's between the two and the four i took the two yeah, I mean, I guess it's between. I I didn't really like anything in here, to be honest. Um, oh. you could throw in a horse last second, and I might, I might end up, you know, rich strike that horse. You know, throw a rich strike in here, I might be like, yeah, that horse makes sense because you're right. Um, I you look at that the same. I did the same thing. I watch, you know, you watch that first race from the two uh, in the debut, and you're like that horse has got some upside for sure and then even though it's it's misleading because the speed figures are came back stronger next time out but you watch the race and the horse was just it almost just like the horse was an idiot like what was just, he doing yeah i don't like i don't know if it was a a, a matter of like being bad if in the field being or whatever like i just think it, the horse was acting like an idiot i'm i'm wondering if saya's getting back aboard he know he knows him. Maybe he's one that's lazy, and you really need to ride him hard to kind of keep him in, into the game a little bit, because he did start to pick up the feet a bit uh, down the stretch. I mean, it was late stretch, but I I don't know. I don't know. Honestly, and and to some degree, I think Truth exposes right. It's like with this group, it's just going to be like who decides to run on Saturday. Really, I mean, it, you. I mean, yeah, some of them would be more shocking than others, but any of these horses could win here. And I would like in a day Saturday, I'm not going to sit here and be like, I can't believe prove right one. They're like, well, these horses suck. So uh, I can, because nothing, you know, and I don't think anything can happen in this race. Um, that's the thing too. You know, one of the first glaring, you know, it's like, if you have say in the last race, we talked about, you know, you've got the, the Pletcher and you've got, those connections a little bit where you're like, okay, there's some upside there and the horse run, but there's like nothing against service and rice and these like, but garden, like, but 
not like we, like we know this we know this song and dance too well like these horses aren't going to end up in the kentucky derby there's not it just doesn't feel like it now and i don't think we really felt like strongly of that group last year you know before the race but we said hey here's a pletcher here's a brown here you know here's some yeah. horses that could improve the fact that you don't even have a name in here is where are is they? Me. Yeah, I don't why, know. why would you not? <laughs> it gets this feel like all it would take is like your C teamer in the Chad Brown or or <laughs> Pletcher to be like and go win this thing. I don't know. It's weird to me, right? I don't know where they're at. I don't either. <laughs> all right. Well, we're both on number two, Tusky Airman and Airmen and uh Good luck to everybody watching this one. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a fun one. That's a terrible name too. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah exactly. That, those horses never do well long long term. My horse is not gonna do anything. Um, all right, let's go to Del Mar race seven. The Jimmy Durant Stakes Grade Three, hundred uh, K for Phillies two year olds going one mile on the turf. Phil twelve shows up here. Maybe not uh the best of horses here but you've got a very good betting race you got the th uh the 11 horse the guaria at three to one four aforementioned chad brown pratt that's where he's at um but are you thinking about taking a sh taking a shot against here it's a big field uh i like horses coming up from the east coast to the west to run on the turf i don't think that's any you know any any secret to anybody uh i I like that Pratt was aboard the horse last time out for Chad Brown. Uh, I think it's going to be enough. I like Liguria to win this race. I know it's a short price, but I just think, uh, you know, that race last time out was pretty darn good. And I don't think Chad Brown's sending this horse out to mess around. So I am going to take the favorite in the spot. I'm, uh, you know, I, I think it is going to be uh, the Chad Brown might win one or two here. It's a, it's a hell of a weekend for, you know, obviously closing weekend at Del Mar, but a hell of a weekend for turf racing at Del Mar where they've got two grade ones. We'll talk about the next two here in a second. Um, but the turf racing is awesome. A lot of big fields, tough races to handicap. Uh, I actually went with, and I see a, a commenter there. I've got uh, the nine. The best is yet to be uh, for Diamato and Rispoli jumps aboard here. Pratt rode this horse last uh, the last two times. Don't really take much stock in that. Obviously, he's going to jump on um the chad brown horse over the diamano uh but you know look this horse debuts overseas wins comes over here runs at del mar uh doesn't run well in the stakes doesn't run terrible just you know just wasn't great but then comes back improves off of that finishes second um at going a mile again i just think this horse is it, it seems like you know diamano is having a bang up meat as well 30 hitting hitting 37 percent and it just feels like this horse is sort of trending in the right direction. We'll have that, I, I believe, a little bit more of a stocking pace or stocking uh, setup that he had in that last race. Um, I just think maybe, you know, he's he's taking the right steps forward. And he, I think he'll get everywhere around that five to one. Um, there you go, Lord Farquhar. <laughs> uh, hey, nice to have you back. Got to take the Irish runner. I agree. Are you from are you from are you from Ireland? He's from overseas. I know for sure. I know. I know he has to be. He's been watching soccer, football. Good pick. Oh, good pick. You like that? I do. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's go to the next one here. Uh, race number nine, the Hollywood Derby Grade One, four hundred K for three year olds going a mile, uh, one one eighth miles on the turf field of eleven lines up here. So another large field. Field. And how about this? Our boy Wit. My boy Wit, seven to two, favorite for Pletcher. Pratt jumps aboard. Wit Halterman, did you ever think Wit would be here and that you might pick him to win a Grade One on the turf at Del Mar? No, and no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I thought it was interesting too with Wit. This is uh, the farthest race yet for him, a mile and an eighth. He's been running at a mile. I could have sworn he ran a mile and an eighth once on those turf races, but he didn't. Um, anyway. I'm going to go number three, Celestial City, on top in this race. I'm going to take a shot against Wit in here. Uh, Celestial City, the three, has won two races in a row, looking very, very impressive. The last race in the Hill Prince, going this distance at Aqueduct, grade two race. If he brings that race with him, he's going to win. He was really dominant in that race, really impressive. 
I hope he can show up with that kind of race again. I do want to give a shout out to our boy, Ramon Vasquez. Uh, Ramon Vasquez picked up his tack, moved to Southern California last year, about mid mid season. Boy, has he been good on that circuit. He's done a good job. Now he gets a pickup mount here for Shug McGahee as he ships a horse over to the West. I'm really happy for Ramon. I've always thought that guy was a really good jockey. He was riding claimers at, at, at Oakland to start off. Then Ash Houston gave him some mounts. Uh, Danny Caldwell really used him a ton and kind of got his name out there. But Ramon's a good rider. He's doing a good job. I'm happy that he's got this mount. Yeah, he's. Uh, it seems like you keep seeing him on better and better horses out there, uh, yep. Ramon. And obviously, this is a pretty decent horse here. I mean, hell, you're in a grade one on the turf, and you get when Shug brings a good turf horse in, you get the mount. So that's pretty sweet um, for Ramon. I listen. I put I put a lot of thought in the three. I, I I think this is a wide open race. I think there's several in here that um, can make a run for it. I like Cabo Spirit a little bit. Um, couldn't pull the trigger at five to one. Kind of like the three, kind of like um, uh, the the ten a little bit for Grand Motion, but ultimately I I, I kind of went back and kept going back uh, to the other motion. Let's call it number two script. Uh, I thought this horse, you know, since coming back, we hadn't seen the horse since February. Came back in October, ran, won an allowance race, then ran a stakes race, restricted stakes race, let it ride, uh, got beat by Handy Dandy, who also is in this race, beats by Catcher, who's in this race as well. Script. It was weird, like just it was like the, the finally got going late in that race. It came flying late, and you watched the run out. The horse was much ahead of everyone else. You know that was going a mile back to back mile races. Grand Motion decides to stretch the horse out, going a mile and eight. I think that horse uh, will want to go longer. And uh, the fact you know you don't you lose Velasquez the last two, but you get Rispoli, who they you know with motion Rispoli hit at thirty three percent. I, I think this is a, it's an interesting horse who, who could who could come flying late, um, and, and I think we'll like the distance. So I'm hoping I get every bit of that eight to one. I like number two script. Good pick, man. I'm on top, I'm on fire with you. I like that horse a lot too. Yep. I hope we get that price right. I think because of the loss, you'll get close. I thought. I think. John White made a good morning line. Of course he did. All right, let's go to Sunday, race seven, stay at Del Mar. The Matriarch Stakes, grade one, worth 400K for Phillies and Mares, three-year-olds and up, going one mile on the turf. Field of 10 uh, lined up here. We don't have morning lines yet, but I got to think our girl here, the six, I know she didn't run great in the Breeders' Cup, but Regal Glory – Regal Glory for Chad Brown, Pratt, who else aboard? Regal Glory, what do you think? I ha I can't go against her in this spot. I just can't. I, I just think the, the, I mean, look, the class is, is going to be big for this horse, right? I mean, she got beat to Casa Creed, okay, when trying the boys. Then she got beat to an Italian who ran fantastic. It took a track record performance to beat an Italian at the Breeders' Cup. She was 10th in the Breeders' Cup mile, but she was in within five lengths of winning and beating modern games. I so I got to go Regal Glory. I think it's going to be tough, though. I think bipartisanship is a kind of a – I don't know what the morning line is going to be. I think that horse could upset in this spot. Uh, I think Dose Zell is interesting also for Chad, but I'm going Regal Glory on top. Yeah, you know, when you when you try to go um, – when you try to go against any any – uh, in any way it's like listen if you want to if you go if you look at her last race from from a numbers perspective then it, it could get competitive even though i i'm with you that you know it, she was right there um but the numbers came back pretty low for that one for her um but if you look at all pretty much her whole season i mean this horse was 100 you know 101 104 105 102 these horses in this race don't sniff that in this race. They, they, they a good race for them is like a 94, 92 um, for these, for some of these horses in this race. So that's the thing. Like I kind of liked pizza Bianca just from a standpoint of if I can get some value there after, after not running great um, a couple times this year. And I mean, she like, you know, won a Del Mar of course in the breeders cup, this horse's top buyer is an 85. 
that's the top buyer of that horse. It's just, it, it just, I just can't get there with the horse. So I'm with you. I just, from class alone, um, seems like this might be her kind of swan song, which is like we talked about earlier, maybe not our favorite thing. Um, but from a class perspective, it's just hard to go against her. So got to go with our girl, number six, Regal Glory. Anybody score in that game? Three zero. Three nothing. Uh, Patriots. One nothing. Blues. They just scored. There you go. So this game tonight, I'll be pretty good just because I, I think uh, New England will do a good job of at least making it close. Um, even though they're Buffalo's better team, but uh, you know they have a way of shutting down. A team like that, especially being like a Thursday night game, I could see it getting being like a low scoring kind of a gritty game, you know? Yep, I agree. I think it's going to be a tough game. This Buffalo team, I don't know. They're banged up. Nope, they're gone. I don't know who that was, but someone just ran <clears throat> special teams. No. Anyways. Oh, yeah. Touchdown uh, pass from Jones. So New England has the lead. All right. That's all the time we have. Uh, check us out at racingnews.com for our free picks and our premium selections on our products page. Click the Get Racing News premium button at menu at the menu at racingnews.com to learn more. Remember, we are uh, your destination site for all free horse racing. Free horse racing picks through all the uh, major horse racing tracks. Go get your hands on that inside track to the 2022 Cigar Mile Wager Guide now available at the website at racingdudes.com. And remember, we're also doing the Racing Dudes Tournament Challenge, your last chance to qualify this weekend, Saturday. You can challenge us in uh, the Racing Dudes Tournament Challenge at Aqueduct. You know you're going to be handicapping anyway, so you might as well join us and try to beat us qualify for the championship uh december 26th on malibu day one of every five top five um qualify so uh we i think we have 35 people uh say we get 10 15 more say there's 50 people you gotta beat you know 49 others in the tournament on december 26th and you win the grand prize and you be crowned the racing dudes tournament challenge champion ultimate is that you did you have your name on that uh, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't given it any thought ever. Maybe I'll try this, this last one. I mean, the closer it gets, like, I'm like, maybe I will, maybe I will allow us to, to accept the money just so we don't have to give it to other people. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, I would not. If you, if we did that, I would be more motivated for sure. <laughs> I don't like to play in a contest where I can't win the money. So <laughs> I don't doesn't, see the the crown, doesn't the crown mean anything to you? No. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, Dan, you're in it. Dan qualified, I believe, right? Yeah. So well, again, he he's playing for money, so that's that's great. <laughs> oh yeah, dude, just, <laughs> the dude just won 10k on a parlay a couple weeks ago, and he, he wants more. Exactly, but I, greedy bastard. Well, listen, I, I'm, the, I think we should still, we should win the money. I, I don't get it. Yeah, well, you know what? Once you qualify first, we'll talk about it. Well, that's <laughs> true. Kind of like with John's bet, you got to get in the gate first. Yeah, that's no both of us have to get in the gate before we can talk anything about the fucking money. Right. Uh, we're on Twitter at racing underscore dudes, Instagram, and Facebook. You find all episodes of Blinkers Off by visiting our podcast page, uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, all the places you listen to podcasts. We are on there. Make sure you go check out the Magic Mike Show. They did the Del Mar Saturday late pick five preview. So if you want some more content, not only for those stakes races, but for the late pick entire late pick five make sure you go check out the magic mike show on all those same channels halterman i i feel like i kind of looked i just now looked at the clock and i kind of thought it very easily could be like a minute 30 or an hour 30 and it's only 104 like i'm pretty proud of ourselves yet once again we've done well I feel good. Yes, I feel very good about it. It was a good show. Plus, we spent like 25 minutes on John's uh, topic. I know. So. Well, shit. It's better than spending any time on some of these under <laughs> these races at Aqueduct. Honestly, I feel like Del Mar's meet has been money. Like, it has been freaking fantastic. 
I feel like since it's turned to regular aqueduct over on the other side, it's like, when does Gulfstream Championship meet start? When does Oakland start? We need something <laughs> over there on that side of it because aqueduct has not been great lately. No, no. I mean, however you want to dress it up, it was not great. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. No. We all knew. We all knew what it was. Yes. Um. Uh, final thoughts. Anything on your mind? What do you want for Christmas? Um, I haven't. Is it, it's not time for Christmas, Come dude. On, it's it's December. We're officially in December. My, my elf showed up today. Okay, no, it's, it's no. Christmas time, baby. No, 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 no. Too early. Too early. Hey, don't tell. <laughs> don't tell Chief that he's here. He's watching. <laughs> Listen, I my final thoughts are: I hope John and Ryan do not get the number one pick in the fantasy draft. That's what I want for Christmas. I want them drafting tenth. <laughs> you know it's not gonna happen though. No, I'll get the first pick. Well, uh I my prediction is that they will they'll get uh top two for sure. And I think I'll get like eighth or ninth, is my guess. So yeah, um I'm always slotted for fifth or sixth. My okay, team's always Rob, filled with like bleh, horses. What Rob wants for Christmas is Gabe Davis to get a touchdown. So there's that. Um, Gabe Davis to get you a touchdown. Good luck. I hope you do. Um, where is Davey? Is Davey on here tonight? No, I don't. Do I don't know. I, I need Davey's uh, email because I got to email him. <laughs> I, I don't even have the guy's email. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, Shoddy, give us give us a horse you're looking at. You know, I it's one horse. Just give us something to go off of. You know, give people some content. See if you see if you've been doing your homework. Yeah, um, Shoddy. If you have the number one pick, who are you taking? Yeah. Let's hear it. I bet she doesn't. I, I guarantee you she won't tell us. No. I haven't I haven't emailed you out. I haven't I haven't sent the emails out yet. That's tomorrow. Hmm. Put David's hmm. email in the chat so everybody can email him. <laughs> <laughs> Other than Forte. So, no, Forte is going to be number one, it sounds like, if they have the number yeah. one. Pick. Yeah. I knew no, I would not like to. I don't even care, Shoddy. You know, I, I don't I don't look. I don't listen to any of you guys. Listen. I'm going back I'm to what I did Shotty's two years ago. I'm just giving you my list. I'm not even showing up. So <laughs> You're showing up. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, right. Yeah. I'll send an email out tomorrow. Okay. Look for that email. And, uh, yeah, if, again, make sure you guys uh, go and sign up. Um, I'll put a link in the uh, in the description of here of this video uh, as well. But make sure you go sign up and uh, challenge us this weekend in the Dudes Tournament Challenge. All right, guys. I'm Jared Welch. He's Aaron Halterman. Good luck this weekend. See you guys.